All right, so I'm starting a new build series, and I am fully aware that my V-Twin build series is not done yet. Um, I have a lot of projects um, going on right now. Um, but um, this engine, I put uh, 10,000 kilometers ago, I put a new piston head gasket in this engine. Um, and every 10,000 kilometers, you're supposed to do uh, all the bearings, your your uh, rod and a new piston and head gasket. So, you know, it's been a little bit hard to start um, and I figured get out ahead of it, um, do that preventative maintenance. Um, you know, it's a race bike, you gotta treat it like a race bike. So I'm gonna get into that and hopefully when I'm waiting on parts for this, because it usually takes about three weeks to, to get parts, I can clear up some of this, these other projects um, that I'm doing. So, just to give you a little breakdown of what's going to happen right now, I'm going to get all this body work off of it, um, get the air box out, I believe, uh, the rear shock, uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the rear wheel off, and the, the radiator, radiators, and just tear all of this down, and then try and get the engine out. Take the carb off of it, um, and, and try and get the engine out. Uh, and on the ground. So that's the goal for tonight. So here's the engine with the top end off of it. And so you might be asking, you know, what what do you do, you know? Now now how do you know um what parts you need uh replacing? Well, um let me explain it to you. So um engines are built with very fine measurements in them. Um and the tolerances have to be just so. Um, there's a range, and if things are too loose, um, then they're gonna wear really quickly. Um, if they're too tight, they'll tend to seize up. Um, so you have to make sure everything's in the right range. So, the first thing that you're gonna check is the bore. So you're gonna look inside of the bore, um, and um, you're gonna look for this nice crosshatch uh, pattern that's on there and you're gonna look for any gouges or marks that are in it um, the cross hatch is like a, like basically an X these X grooves are, are what you want to see um, then you're gonna measure um, this way and this way and check for oblongness um, and then you're gonna measure in the bottom of the cylinder and in the top and check for taper so 
when when the piston is down in the bottom, um, the the rod is going to be at a higher angle and it's going to push harder on the side of the cylinder. And then when it's up near the top, it's going to be more upright. Um, and so generally it's going to wear down in the bottom of the cylinder more than it wears in the top. Um, and then you're going to check the difference between the piston and the cylinder. Now you can't see it um, uh, in a video really, but there is a, a gap. The, the piston has worn, the cylinder hasn't really because the cylinder is made out of nickel and it's a very hard compound. The, the, the piston is designed to wear quicker. And so you'll go through several pistons before you have to change a cylinder, uh, and the cylinders are really expensive. Uh, and the, the pistons are about 300 to 350 US. So um, the, the piston is worn. Um, maybe you can see that, see how it moves around. And I knew based on the mileage and based on how it was starting that, that this, this was the case, that this piston is worn. Um, it's time for a new piston. So I broke it down. Um, the, I, 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 I don't want to wait too long until there's really a problem. Um, I want to get out ahead of things. So what are we looking at here? Well, here we have our, our flywheel. And, you know, as that turns, the piston goes up and down. And so another thing you measure is the side-to-side -side, uh, movement of this uh, rod. So you can see here the rod slides side-to-side. -side. And the, the spec, the stock uh, movement, is about um, 0.3 to 0.6 uh, millimeters. Um, if it's 0.75 millimeters, then you need to replace it. And it is. It's right on the wear limit. It's 0.75. And so it's time to replace this rod, which means splitting the, the cases. And, you know, when you, when you split the cases, you automatically on these things, um, you know, after 10,000 kilometers or more, um, you're going to do the big end bearings. So, so I'm going to do those as well. And, and then it should be good. Um, everything else looks pretty good. So um, another thing that you're going to check is the timing chain. So here's your timing chain here, um, and uh, you, you measure between uh, 21 of these pins. And when it's stocked from the factory, it should be 155 millimeters. If it's more than 158, then it's stretched too far, and you uh, replace it. 158 is the wear limit. Um, this one is like 156. It's barely stretched at all, so, so we're good. I don't have to replace that. When you replace... Um, this, you would also replace um, the, the sprocket on the bottom and then, then the, the cam sprocket as well. Uh, the heads over here, um, the valves haven't moved or anything, so I don't see any reason to, to you know, do anything with them. Just going to clean it up and slap it back on there. The, the, the valves don't seem to be wearing. Um, everything, everything's looking pretty good. So, so, um, that's that. All right, so according to the manual, you need a special tool um, that, that bolts onto this case and pulls it apart from the crankshaft. So I made this custom piece of metal, uh, drilled holes in it, and I'm going to use this to pull apart the the cases from the crankshaft. So this was my contraption. Um, it bowed up in the middle. This is three millimeter plate steel. Um, so I had quite a lot of pressure on it, but this bottom part is what didn't want to let go. Um, it, the, the top part was letting go, but the bottom part wasn't. So I focused it on this. I put some heat on it. I used the, the screwdrivers and got got it to pop apart.
here's where I'm at. Last night I spent a long time working on putting the cases together and voila, they're together. So um, this side over here uh, took me the most time um, and the GoPro ran out of battery and I, I stopped recording but I spent a long time messing around with the oil pump and then the shift drum, um, the little mechanism that works th with that. Um, it was very complicated and the oil pump has two sets of rotors, um, one on the inside, one on the outside, a shaft going through, and then the housing has that it runs in um, has these little pins that have to line up. And from the outside, you can't really see how it's supposed to line up. So that was really tricky. Um, and then I was reading the directions, and when you take it apart, you're actually supposed to mark it. Um, and apparently that makes it a lot easier to put it back together. Um, and then you know where it goes. Um, so if I ever have to split these cases again, which I hope I don't, um, I will know that trick. That's a, that's a good trick to know. Um, so yeah, I put the clutch on it. Uh, that's not in the video. And I did all of that. Um, over here, we've got the head. So this looks nice and clean. That's because I sent it off to a machine shop to do. They did a really good job with this. So I've got me some brand new um, titanium valves. Look at how beautiful those valves look. And so I knew that I had a couple in the closet from the last owner. So I looked in there um, and in fact he had four. Um, I thought he only had the, the intake valves, but he had all four valves. Um, and so that's $950 worth of valves right there, original OE um, uh, Husqvarna valves. So that makes me feel really good, really happy. Um, so I got a new set of valves on there. Um, in a little bit, I'm gonna change this guy. Cause this one's, it's not too bad, but it is, it's good. Yeah, here, here we go. Here's the crash right there, uh, around that bolt hole there. Um, so I figure it's time, time to replace that. Um, they, those don't last very long. It's pretty annoying. I'm on my third one already. Um, then I'll have to uh, set the these valve clearances and bolt everything up.
gotta check over it carefully. But, woo! Couldn't be more chopped.